Hey Jamrin developers, this is Jamrin guys. So 27 tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be creating slider panel. If we go to our project, this is my app. Then, this is my background image, and this is my page that will slide it up. So in order to create such type of project in both Android as well as iOS, at first we'll go to File, then New, and then select Project. Here we'll see a lot of options. Right now we're writing code for cross platform. That's why I'll select that cross platform and give it a name as sliding panel and then click on OK. After that, you can select as any project as you like that is shared as well as portable. Then here I'll be dealing with main project rather than project that are targeting both Android as well as iOS. So I'll be minimizing them. In Xamarin forms, whatever you code goes to the root project because it applies to all project. Here app.jml has two part actually, they are jml part as well as .cs part, it's a very much important part as it's an area where we are evaluating our app to start from the position. Here main page is a placeholder which contains the page to be loaded. Before designing our main page, let us go to our project and then include some NuGet packages from manage NuGet package console. Here we have to type dk sliding panel from our browse option and then install in all our project as I have already installed. So I'll cut that. So in order to create some relationship between our NuGet packages and our main page, we have to include two piece of code that is our XAML DK as clear namespace dot DK sliding panel, so that we are inheriting some assembly over here. I'll drag and drop my code in order to save some time so that I can explain it more. In previous session, we have already discussed about absolute layout and what's the use of them. I'll be placing that sliding panel inside my absolute layout and I'll be giving that name indication as main. Now let us create some stack layout that will be placed inside our absolute layout giving a vertical as well as horizontal option as fill and expand and I'll be placing one image inside my stack layout. This is my piece of code that you can view them. Then this is my image source that is image1.jpg and I'll be giving that aspect as aspect field. I'll be placing that image inside my drawable resources folder. You have to understand that I'll be placing that image one as my background. And then again one stack layout I'll define and that stack layout will be above my previous first stack layout. Now let us discuss about our second stack layout. Here I'll be placing my image source as image2.jpg. That will be my panel image and I'll be giving as gesture recognizer as handle tab that panel if it is clicked then it goes to our code behind so I'll be creating here item event handler that means if I tap that panel then it should slide up so in order to handle such type of event so here I'll be generating handle tab event now let us call that event object and then we have to pass event argument as e and then let us create initial position from our main page or our main as i have already given that main as my absolute layout indication then current position as body dot height okay then await body then I have to translate to 0 as my initial position minus my current position then I have to place that easing value as sign in as easing are the function that modify value non-linearly generally used for animations here I have used easing sign in as Easing smoothly accelerates for that. Now let us keep vertical translation of our body minus I have to place main, it's not our main page, it's our main. I have given some indication for that. Dot height plus 500. Then I have to close it. Here I have done some mistakes, I have to change that. Now let us compile and run our project whether it gives me correct output or not. Oh 
okay it's being debugging let's see whether it gives me correct output or not okay yeah. got our expected output if i press it then it slides off that's all thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for next tutorials